Welcome to this service of prayer during the day for Pentecost 2020. It's a very odd season. We are celebrating the Holy Spirit coming down to the church. We're celebrating what's often called the birthday of the church. But we can't be in our buildings. But the Holy Spirit is still with us. So let us pray. And in common with all the other services we've done, this is quiet and reflective. There's space for you to bring your own thoughts and your own prayers. If you need the text, it's on our website, www.stmarkteddington.uk. But it's fine to just listen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. My heart tells of your work. Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. So some words from Ephesians and Colossians. God raised Christ from the dead and enthroned him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. God put all things in subjugation beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things in the church. We died and our life lies hidden with Christ in God. We set our minds on things above. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed we too will be revealed with him in glory. So our first reading today is from Acts. And as we read it, perhaps it's going to bring up some strong emotions because the disciples were hidden away in a room. They were frightened. Their world had changed beyond everything they had expected. And doesn't that feel so familiar right now? But they were all together, they weren't alone. So challenging reading, but listen, and in your imagination, perhaps be there with the disciples on that first Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished they asked, Are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and all parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Egypt, Cretans and Arabs, all in our own languages as we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Indeed, those are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
Even my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's just take a moment to reflect on that momentous day and how it feels today. Our gospel is another locked room. From John chapter 20. Again. Hear the reading and see how you feel. How do you respond? When it was evening of that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples met were locked of fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Again, let's just reflect on that reading. So we pray. We pray for those who are anxious, for those who are afraid at this time. We pray that God's Holy Spirit would bring them peace. We pray for those who are watching others come out of lockdown they have to stay indoors, are really struggling at this time. We pray for those who are, who are alone and watching others gather. We pray that God's Holy Spirit would be with them in all their mixed emotions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church around the world where it has to meet in locked rooms, where it is not safe to be a Christian. We pray for their leaders. We pray for all of those who worship in secret and pray for a time when they too can proclaim the name of the Lord without fear of persecution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church at a time of pandemic when everything is changed. When we're planning how we might go back to our buildings, knowing that everything has changed. We pray for church leaders as they work out how to continue doing online and how to be church safely, knowing that throughout the ages the church has adapted. The people are the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick. We give thanks for those who are recovering, 
but we pray for all of those this week in hospital or attending appointments. We pray for those who are nervous about taking up routine appointments in hospitals. We bring before you those who we know are not well at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. Remembering this week, Irene Warner, whose funeral was this week. We remember Margaret and her sons as they mourn her death and her wider family. We pray for all of those attending funerals that are not as they would have wished, or for those As we long for your equipping, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill us with your spirit. So please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer in whichever language or whichever version is most familiar. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So my prayer this week is, as we face new challenges, that we would be confident enough to pray, come Holy Spirit, empower us, fulfil us, refresh us, and help us with those challenges that are now and to come. Amen. May the risen Christ give us his peace. Alleluia. God bless.